So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Booth Theater session today on Python and Excel, um, a new feature that we announced last August 2023. So some of you may have already had the chance to try it out. Um, but if not, I'll, I'll explain how you can get access to the feature today. Um, so just to give a little bit more of a background, my name is Nyanta. I'm currently a product manager at Microsoft, um, who's worked extensively on this feature over the last few years. I'm joined with Petra over here. Um, she will be helping field questions um, and hand out some fun prizes towards the end, um, as well as Ryan and Allison, who are joining us from Anaconda, um, as this was a partnership between the two um, of us to build this feature today. So to get started, we'll just kind of walk a little bit through about why Python and Excel um, as Many of you know there are lots of languages or um, software that you can use to analyze data. Um, and so we really wanted to give a little bit of background and context on why we specifically chose Python. Um, and so with that, we did a lot of market research to kind of understand what the, what the languages users are using today to do analysis um, and specifically for data analysis. Um, this is one of the examples of that. We did not just go to Bing Chat and say, which language should we pick, of course. Um, but if you do, for example, ask Bing Chat to give you a list of the top tools you should learn for data analysis, you'll notice it gives you a lot of responses back. Excel, Python, Jupyter Notebook, um, Power, even Power BI towards the very end. Um, and so what we wanted to point out here was it wasn't really surprising for us to see Excel and Python um, listed as the top tools that folks should use for analysis. From an analysis, from an analyst perspective, um, Excel is largely used across the board. Um, and similarly, Python to be able to use libraries like Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Pandas to do data analysis on top of data frames um, within different IDEs that you choose. Um, and so with that, we, we also saw an interesting narrative um, around some of our market research where customers were saying they were in the process of, of moving away from Excel into Python. Um, they were saying that they didn't really use Excel because they can't use Python with it. Um, and even in the education space, we saw where people were saying they knew Excel, but they then wanted to learn Python. Um, and in the similar sort of similar vein, the internet was actually creating guides and sharing material on how people can move away from Excel and into Python. Um, and so we saw this as an opportunity because we believe it's not really an or that you don't necessarily have to choose between the two tools, but there is an opportunity to join them together um, for an and. And so we were able to bring the two worlds of data analytics together. Python loves Excel, as you'll see some of us have those t-shirts on. We have extras to give away towards the end. Um, and so with that, our mission is really to empower all Excel users to do more with their data analytics um, between the partnership that I explained before, Microsoft, um, along with Anaconda, who helps us make sure we have the environment set up um, in a reliable way, and you can access all the libraries that you know and love um, within the distribution that they provide. And so we'll be doing this in two ways. The first is with the actual feature Python in Excel that I've talked about um, a bit in the beginning, but also some of you have likely heard of the Copilot world. Um, and Copilot is an interesting piece here because as with the AI boom, um, it really gives us an opportunity to tap into customers that may not be familiar with Python or don't already know it. Um, so you can use the chat pane to help you write Python code, explain that code, and insert it into the grid um, and conduct your analysis that way. So there's also a learning opportunity, teaching opportunity here um, for people who don't know Python, but also for people who do know Python like myself. It's great because I don't have to start off writing any code. It can start it for me, and then I can make my edits as I wish. Um, and so with that, I'll go into a live demo into Excel to show you how the feature works. And then I'll come back into PowerPoint to show you a video on the Copilot piece so you can also see how that works today. OK, so I'm going to excuse my like looking <laughs> backwards. Um, but I'm going to kind of zoom out here just to give you a sense of what we're looking at. So. What's great about this is Excel is a canvas, right? So I can design my spreadsheet any which way I want um, and put the code, basically, anywhere I want that is in row major order is the way we execute. Um, and so in this worksheet, you'll see we have two tabs. 
Um, the first is the data tab where the data lives that we'll be looking at. And so this just looks at passengers um, that traveled over um, a number of dates in the 1900s. Um, a very simple data set with two columns. Um, and then in the second spreadsheet, we have a layout that we built before um, writing, writing the code to kind of lay out step by step of how we want to do our analysis. So we'll be doing an exponential smoothing forecasting. Um, and I will zoom in so that everyone can see. So the first thing we'll want to do here is load in our Python libraries. Um, if you go into the formulas tab, you'll notice that there is a new chunk. Um, within that chunk, there's an insert Python button, a button to reset your runtime, a button for diagnostics, and a button for initialization. So there's a few ways you can invoke Python mode or a Python cell. The first of which is to click this button. The second is to type equals py. So just like you would type equals sum equals if, there is a Python function. Um, and so now once I do that, you'll notice you get a green badge. Um, and that badge will let you know that you are in Python mode. Here you cannot execute with enter like you do a regular formula because with Python code you often have more than one line. Um, and so the, the cell will increase in height as you continue to go down to add more lines. So let's start, get started by importing some libraries. So there are libraries that we initialize by default. Um, I will not list all of them or share them all here, but I'm happy to share. Um, we'll be at the booth all day, so can share that more detail. Um, but to start, we will import some libraries. So let's import Panda, Seaborn, Matplotlib, Stats Model, um, and for our exponential smoothing. And at the last piece, we'll include a string to let us know that the Python libraries went in successfully. So if I hit Control Enter, you'll notice you'll get a pound busy, and that's the code being run um, in the Microsoft Cloud. And once it's returned successfully, I know that because I received my string at the very end. Next, we'll create our data frame that we'll actually do the analysis on. So another way you can do a Python um, cell, which is great for our Excel lovers who love keyboard shortcuts, is through a keyboard shortcut. So if you hit Control Alt Shift P, um, that will create a Python cell as well. Now, in order to import the data into Excel, you can actually reference uh, cells that are in the Excel spreadsheet itself. So you'll notice, you'll see there is an Excel function, um, and all the code is passed through that function. So I can, again, use my keyboard shortcuts to select all my data. Table 2 is the name of my table in Excel, and I have headers, so I'll keep that as true. Control Enter, and my data frame is created. What's nice about this is this is also a data type within Excel, so some of you may have previously used data types. Um, so I can do things like if I go over this um, icon here, I can show the card, and that will give me a preview of the first five and the last five rows within my data set. Similarly, if I want to know certain um, things about the data frame, there are field properties here that you can also enter into the grid. And that will give you more of an idea of what the data frame is and what it contains and what it looks like. Um, next, we'll go into plotting our actual values. So it's nice to be able to see the first five and the last five. But if I want to get a sense of kind of the trend here, I can do that by, again, equals PY. So you just always want to remember that, because if not, you will, it'll be a mess. <laughs> Um, and then I will run some code here that will create a plot for me to see um, the actual values over time. So once I commit that, mm -hmm. oh, OK. Well, I ran into an error for a few reasons. The first is I did not label this data frame. So you can actually name the data frame. Um, so once I hit Control Enter, this will run again, and my code below it updated, and it ran successfully. So I got back an image data type this time, so different than the data frame. Similarly, um, there are actions and fields that I can get back from this, so even things like the size of the image at the very bottom. I can hover over here and get a preview of the image that will load here, along with the size at the bottom. Um, and if I want to see the image, image more enlarged, I can right click, and you'll notice there's a new button called Display Plot Over Cells. If I click that, a plot appears that I can put anywhere I want. I can cut this and paste it into PowerPoint. Um, you can leave it in Excel. You can resize it and do things like that. 
So for the sake of this, I will just bring this up here um, over to the side. And so now we'll go into building um, the actual forecasting model. So I will run some code here that will do that. While I do this, you'll notice I'm taking in different assumptions that are above the code. Um, this is, we need that in order to reference the cells in the code itself, and it actually references the exact cell that it lives in. So C8 is where I have my periods. C9 is the trend. C10 is um, the seasonality. And then C11 is if I want box cocks applied or not. Um, and then the last line just fits that into um, the model. So once I hit control enter, I will get back that result. And then I can run the forecast on top of that. So short line, but it's great to be able to break everything up cell by cell so that I know that now I got my forecast back. So again, I can preview it here. You'll see it is a, a series. Um, and then similarly, I have the same fields properties that I did previously. Um, and now let's say I want to plot my forecast as well. I'm able to write code to just do reference the cell previously dot plot, control enter, and this will return an image data type. So we have different marshalling modes within Python and Excel that can be controlled a few ways, but the first is right by the formula bar. You'll notice this is a Python object, but if I click here, I have two options, a Python object and an Excel value. If I switch this to an Excel value, I won't get a data type back, but instead I'll get the actual value that that data type is directly into the cell. Um, and similarly, I'll, I'll do the same here to show you how that would work with a series. So I'd run the same code, I'll get a series back, and then I can switch it to an Excel value and it will spill onto my data set. So I can see all of my values here. And probably my favorite part, I think, of Python and Excel is the ability to do this. So if I want to look at different scenarios here, not just the first that I built, um, I would have to copy paste the code, change my inputs, um, and then rerun everything. But with Excel functionality, since this is already built in for native formulas today, I can highlight the cells that I'm interested in replicating the analysis for and just simply drag it to the right. And you'll notice it is automatically updated and it references the scenario inputs that I would like right above, of it, right above it. So you'll notice here, if I double click into this, you'll see it's referencing these cells right above. Um, and similarly, if I click right in here, it also references scenario three above. So this is great because it allows you to, okay. It's great because it allows you to test different scenarios, compare them side by side. Um, so I can look at how these different assumptions make a difference in what my forecast looks like over time. So with that, I will go back into my PowerPoint. Okay, great. So as you saw, um, when I was running the code, you saw pound busy. Um, and I mentioned that this code gets sent up to the Microsoft Cloud. Um, some of you may be wondering why cloud, why did we decide to have the code run there instead of locally? Um, and there are four important reasons that I just wanted to walk through with everyone today. The first is reproducibility. Um, we, with Excel, the expectation is that you can open a workbook from over 30 years ago um, and it will still work. Um, and so we wanted that same thing to apply here, right? I can open a Python spreadsheet that hopefully 30 years from now um, I still have access to and I will still be able to run that without any issues. The second is collaboration. Um, the Excel team had a really big investment in co-authoring and having the ability for multiple users to be in the same workbook at the same time and do things in Excel reliably. And so we wanted to make sure we saw that piece here. Um, it's not always that you are the only one writing code or doing analyses. And so with running in the cloud, we're able to have you share your workbook with others. They can not only see your results, but also add to your analysis in the cells as well. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> Thirdly is ease of use. Um, I remember when I was first learning how to install Python, I was like, wow, that's a lot of steps. Um, there are no steps here. 
you just open Excel, types equal PY, and you can write code right there. You do not have to install anything. And even if you do want to install anything, but you share it to someone who has no idea how to do that, they don't have to worry about that. Um, it's all set up for them. And lastly is security. Um, we know security is top of mind for everyone, and we wanted to make sure we protect your organization's data. Um, and so with that, we run it in a secure sandbox. Um, none of the data is contained in that a new container is opened every session. Um, and it is only online so long as the workbook is open uh, or until you hit a timeout. Um, and then that container is destroyed and a new one is opened or started, I should say. Um, so with that, just to kind of talk through how you can try it out if you haven't already. Um, there's a lot of information here. So the first and most important thing is the first bullet, um, joining the Microsoft 365 Insiders program. We're currently still in preview, so we're only available for the beta channel. Um, the build and version number is all there, um, but we are available to all users. So enterprise, education, family, and personal users who run beta channel on Windows. Um, and that's another important piece. We're only available on the Win32 platform. Um, with plans to extend the platforms beyond Win32, but starting there for now. Um, we also have a wait list. I'll pull up a QR code to the very end for you to join, and that's where we'll let people know about future availability and things like that. Um, and then lastly, you can share your feedback. So we have a GitHub page, um, and you can also do the same in the Excel helps in it, um, in the Excel help feedback button. Um, and then lastly, we also have a Python editor. Um, if we have time towards the end, not too many questions, I will share this and show you, show you how the Python editor works. It's the likes of a Jupyter notebook, um, and it's a pane on the right-hand side where you can write, write and edit code just like you would in a Jupyter notebook file, cell by cell by cell. Um, we have a number of resources because, of course, this is all new. Um, I won't walk through everything here, but there's a number of places you can go to get help if you need. Um, as well as Anaconda. They've put together a number of resources, a number of places you can learn on courses, um, as well as community engagement towards the very bottom as well. I'll let folks take a picture of that. Um, and then again, if you want to stay in touch, we'll be here, Petra, myself, Ryan, Allison, at this booth in Anaconda. Feel free to come up to us, ask any questions, give any feedback, um, and things like that. We'll be happy to help. And so with that, I'll take any questions. So not yet. Right now, we're only on desktop, um, but we, we do have plans to extend to other platforms. Um, but if the wait list would be the best place for you to know like once we are available on online. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, so there are data limits on how much you can um, run within Python and Excel. But I've heard people do, and what we usually share is to try it on smaller pieces of data at first, just to know exactly what you want to run. Um, and then with a larger data set, of course, it would just take more time. Um, but there, there are data limits. I can share with you exactly what those are. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, with collapse, that could be even smaller. Sorry? With collapse, that could be even smaller. Oh, no. So collab doesn't affect that at all. Yeah. Um, it will just be like what we can actually send up to the cloud and return back. Um, but if there are specific like data sizes that you often work with, I'd love to chat to kind of get an understanding of that. Anyone else? No? Okay. Well, if you have any questions, we'll be here all day. So feel free to stop by. Um, thank you again so much for your time.